Alright, I'm a glutton for punishment, so after an hour of Suzuka, I have signed up. Well, not signed up because I've been in this series for a while, but this is the ESR Enduro series. Imola round, over one hour of racing today with the mandatory pit stop. Just stretching my back here so if the audio quality is subpar. I do apologize, that's just because my head is moving in relation to where the microphone is. So, what do we got here? Um, we got Imola GT3, GT4s. Somebody is talking in the Discord. You guys may not be able to hear that. Uh, the GT4 start with Liam Curtin, Z Duran, Alex Lawfer. I'm in fourth place right now. Javi Perez Torres is right on my tail. John Barker. Oh, somebody zipped up there. It's Sergio Mengual just took my fourth place. There we go. Four. Fifth, sixth for Perez. Barker, Butler. Scott Nick is back. And Mauricio Delgado. Not sure which one John Spriggs is in. I hope GT3, because he's a fast driver. Andrew D up front. That's bizarre. Josiah Jerome. Fumihiro Kobayashi, Bertrand Barrier, Ariel Zatoni, Martin Edmonds, Max Simmons, Wayne Hutchison, Luciano Echazo. Uh, a bit of eclectic, uh, eclectic mix. Um, Echazo has not gotten a proper lap in by the looks of it. So hopefully he can do that uh, in these last three and a half minutes or so. Andrew D being up there, a bit weird. Kobayashi is on his game today as well. Looks like that is going to be an interesting fight. I look forward to commentating it later. But it's not the one that we're worried about right now. The one we're worried about right now is the GT4 battle, which sadly we're not in for a race victory, I don't think. Liam Curtin is got... Liam Curtin and Zifo Duran are, um, are the men right now. So the goal for me is going to be that third place fight with Loeffler, Mengual, myself, Butler, Perez Torres, and Barker, I think. Uh, not that I think I'm going to get a podium necessarily, but I do believe um, we can be in shouting distance of it. Don't have a lot of practice here, but I did re race Imola in GT4s not too long ago and got a pretty solid result. I hate this logo. Like, what have what have they done with the BMW? Anyways, um, fuel check. 3.1 per lap. So let's throw that in there. Um, how long is this race again? session info 105 minutes so uh, uh, 105 so 107 we'll say for safety margin uh, fuel usage we'll call it a 154 is the high ground the absolute high ground I would say we're capable of doing 53s but we won't we won't be doing those under full uh, fuel probably more like 55s to be honest so 114 we'll say gives us 56 laps probably 3.1 so 175 liters uh, it's so we're gonna be wanting to use about 180 for the race in total as Scott Nick has flipped up in front of us as well so general not really caring about so we can carry 115 in the car and then stop preset we'll take 75 at the pits and probably less than that but that is what we'll plan uh, for okay gotta remember all my uh Gotta remember my controls. <laughs> it's been a while since I played this game. All right, so this is all. This is all the same. This is it. Pit stop. Toggle. Eleven and twelve. Uh, let me remember the button layout of my wheel. I think I know which buttons those are. Oh wait, yeah, I can just pull up the Thrustmaster software, right? Uh, Thrustmaster control panel, please. 
properties. Uh, I don't think they match. Oh, so it's a good thing I'm looking at this, because it's not... Ah, okay, so it's the two base buttons. Okay. Are my pit stop stuff. That's that's good to know. So, 11 and 12 are on the... Are down. Yeah. So... Or maybe not... Let's find out what's going to happen here. Okay, so those are the buttons. Just the menu won't come up yet, apparently. Oops, got next to the key. Uh, I was going for the inside. Mengual was going for the inside. I had to back out. And that has put me at the back of the pack, but the other option would have been a massive pileup. Looks like we get a yellow flag anyways. Couple of cars off. So, whoa. Corvette off. That's got to be Ichazo. And, no, uh, Kobayashi is in, the, is in the Corvette. Okay. And Bertrand Barrier who I assume is not very happy, but I don't speak French. Because they, I think, started on the second row. So that's... That's really unfortunate for whoever was the, uh... Was the, uh... Yeah, but it's kind of pointless. Most of us don't speak French. Oh, I, I, I speak enough French to get the gist of it. I'm just saying, it's kind of pointless. <laughs> so, Bertrand losing his shit, and we lost Kobayashi from the race, although I do somewhat suspect Kobayashi may have been the author of his own demise there, based on the fact that Martin seems to think that... Um, Barrier had a right to be upset, and Kobayashi started right next to him. This makes me think Kobayashi did something um, poor behavior. Alex Loeffler falling back there. So that gets me in a last place. Wonder what happened with him. Oh, he's going really slow. I really wish Bertrand would stop talking. Like, there's, um,. There, he left the game. It's, it's like... Shit, here's the thing. If you look at everybody who's racing GT3s for a half second, so all the, all the possible people that he's angry with, only one of them speaks French. And Loeffler's in the pit, so he's definitely got some damage. Um, only one speaks French. And that'd be, that would be Martin. In any kind of... Uh, conversant level. Because, um... Well, none of the other ones are French, and then, like... I mean, sure, us in Canada, we have, like, a basic high school grasp of French. Like, I could under I, I figured out, you know, what he was saying in the gist of it. It's the typical first lap thing. But... I'm also n not the one that hit him. <laughs> I guess. In an, oh, Mauricio Delgado. Losing it. So I'm all over the back here. Scott and Nick. This is going to be very weird because the, uh, the KTM is, well, just a weird car. It's kind of like a an overpowered go-kart in a lot of ways.
He's not very strong in this game. So I should be able to get past him. But he is holding so far, and he did qualify well. So he is making that thing work for him. I think he started in the top five. No, about that being an incident. Liam Curtin, fastest lap. Fast slap for me, 57.5. What a wet race at Suzuka. If you've not checked out that video, that was. That's worth looking at. Scott this lap. This is actually one of the turns I'm having a lot of trouble with just keeping legal. Like It feels like I'm going way too slow through it, but I'm also illegalizing it quite often. Which is surprising, because it's not, that it's not a difficult turn. Like There are difficult turns on this track, like the one we just went through there, Aqua Minerali, like that's 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 a generally tough one. You see drivers screw that up all the time. Um, I really need to lay off the uh, the curbs a little bit because those will wreck your car. Ahead of us, that is Mengual and Barker jousting as I go off it. Rivatsa. That'll probably happen more than once. I'm gonna reach for my water here. Oh, Alex Loeffler is thrown in the towel. That is disappointing. I like racing against Alex. I mean, his his race was definitely highly compromised. He was the one we overtook, and then he he pitted on like lap one. But. I mean, I know this isn't like, you know, 24 hours of Le Mans style racing here where, like, this amount of time just doesn't matter, but, like, race is over an hour. Hour and 45 minutes. So, the idea that, like, an early pit stop would... The idea that, like, anyone's race is over right now... It's, it's kind of the same thing as, like, when people try to win the race on, on, on lap one. You're like, there's plenty of time. It's the same when like people quit after like seven minutes. Especially with the race room uh, damage model, <laughs> if we're being honest. <laughs> God damn, the race room tire model is pissing me off right now, and it always does, because it's just... It's not realistic. I've said this, like, a number of times. Yes, if you go off the track, there is a grip penalty, and the tires are not designed for that. They will lose temperature, they will pick up stuff from the... from whatever surface you went off on, and Zifo Duran puts a fastest lap, and so on, and there's there's a ton of things that that, that have to go into that. Uh, the thing is, um, they don't become useless for like four lap for like two laps in a row, and that's still kind of what race rooms going with is their as their tire model, their hefty punishment of any off track basically is to make your tires completely useless you have to adjust the pit stop a ton because we're we're looking at less than 60 liters to take on which makes sense not putting up anywhere near qualifying times
Catching Scott Nick again. Caught him twice, but couldn't get past him either time. Mengual and Barker up ahead as well. Somebody's playing Rocket League. I lose him through through uh, Piratella pretty frequently. Oh, that was a rough one for Aquaman and Rally. Fast, but not advisable. <laughs> I've been breaking too early for for Alta. I've been using the 100 meter marker. It's probably more like 75 meters. So hopefully, hopefully correcting that will allow us to gain some ground back. But by the same token, I really need to break earlier for Ravatsa because, like you know, that was nice. But we've had a couple laps that got. Very, very interesting through there. We'll put it that way. There we go. 2.2 seconds faster that lap. Boom! 55.2. That's better. That's what I... That was more like what I expected. It was uh, high 54s, low 55s. Villeneuve. Interesting. I've always I've always wondered that. Now, to be clear, I'm not big into sports car racing, so that could really just be the answer. But like, I've always found it a bit weird that Imola, which is a track so synonymous with Ferrari, has very little in the way of like Ferrari Formula One namesakes. I mean, obviously it's Villeneuve, but that's really about it. Like, there's no there's no turn for Alberto Ascari, the first Italian champion with Ferrari, the only Italian champion with Ferrari. Um, uh, someone like, I don't know, Bandini or uh, Peter Collins, who I'm under a distinct, uh, I've always been kind of told, uh, was very close with Enzo and Enzo's son. Sergio Mengual has had a journey. Kind of makes me want to attack now because we were talking about the tires earlier. His tires probably are still not up to grip. Means we could potentially take a spot here. And a key one. I didn't look at the championship standings for I got here. The once a month nature of the Enduro makes it a little bit hard with so many other series. I, you know what, honestly, honestly, I probably would remember if if I wasn't driving the exact same car in the multi class as in the Enduro. Um, I think that's that's actually the key is that racing the same car, same livery means I'm, I'm having a hard... And, and against largely the same people. Like, my multi-class rivals are Mengual, were like Mengual, Barker, um, Javier Perez Torres, Sifo Duran, Liam Curtin on a regular basis, James Butler, and then we get to the Enduro series and it's like, well, my rivals are those exact same people. <laughs> So I don't, don't even really know where I am championship-wise. Just gonna. This series has kind of become a bit by the wayside right now because I've got the uh, the Super Saturday Super Series again up on the YouTube channel. Check it out. Sixty minutes of Suzuka with uh, some interesting weather. get wide so I don't take those yellow the yellow curbs are the ones that will wreck your car so you either want to keep it inside like completely legal or you want to just go for like the legal lap <laughs> and get wide <laughs> Liam Curtin is taking the lead and fastest lap This will be a 
high 55. Should be like a 55.7. Yep. But anyways, it's, it's a bit it's a bit interesting that there's just not more corners around this track named for like the Ferrari F1 guys. Maybe these are all sports car. Maybe like Tamborello is for that. Piratella, Tosa. But like, this is the only tr corner, as far as I know, that's named after a Ferrari driver. Ferrante Villeneuve. Uh, I'm gonna hang to the inside. Looks like the JBs may have had problems. Andrew D will be next up. Josiah Jerome in the lead. Let him through on the lead up to Alta. There we go. Probably cost him a little bit of time in relation to Josiah, but. I mean, Josiah also caught me at like Variante Villeneuve into Tosa, which is like a super easy area to make, to let someone by in comparison to like. Uh, Piratella and Aqua Minerali. Oh, we're catching Scott Nick. He's only five and a half seconds up the road. Can't do anything about uh, Sergio Mengual, it seems. 56 2. Oh, a horde of blue flags are coming through. Martin Edmonds, Max Simmons, Air Hills of Tony. There's a Porsche on the back end of that, probably Mole. Say, everyone's gonna dive. Everyone's gonna dive. Mole is the one that gets a little bit unlucky. Couldn't let him through without, like, just completely flooring it off the track. Lost a ton of time, of course. Hopefully everybody else runs into similar problems. You can see them making their way through on Sergio. Looks like Ariel got the worst of the, uh, that lapping. This dropped a little bit back more into a fight with... Mole. Or no, that's not Mole, it's John Spriggs. Okay. Or is John Spriggs Mole? I, I don't I don't even remember. I said someone said Mole was here. I haven't seen him. That's the car he usually runs, so I don't know. I'm I'm confused now. Gap is nice and opened up between me and Sergio now. Plenty of time, though. Plenty of time. I mean, we got over an hour here still. Jesus. <laughs> Plenty of time. Wayne Hutchison coming through. There we go. And then it will be Richard Higgs. Whose son is doing his best to feud with me again? Doesn't work. I'm the admin. <laughs> I have powers that you don't. Is that the last of the? Uh... Or no, that was Ichazo. Higgs will be. Higgs will be next up. Jesus. Come on, Mike. You're losing your mind. Anyways, how many? How many GT3s today? Ten GT4s on track. And then. 21 total cars, so 11 in theory, but that might be counting um, Kobayashi and uh, Barrier, who are both out of the race. Because I think it is counting um, Loeffler. In fact, it definitely is. 
And Loeffler is out of the race. Curtin Duran, kind of in a world of their own, which was expected. Nobody else in, in GT4 was close to them. Javier is holding on to third. Good for him. And then Barker, Butler, Nick, Mengual, and myself. need to remember I don't need to ship down into third gear for Villeneuve. Mm, close in the gap to Mengual, so. I can see Butler up there in that yellow and kind of like weirdly ice cream colored car. <laughs> so from third to eighth is actually uh are a pretty interesting fight. It's just the the top two have absolutely gutted us. On this day, Richard Higgs is coming up behind me, I assume. Orange and black. Mercedes. Let him through into Rivaza, or maybe not. Maybe that was a bad idea. So he was kind of slow through there. <laughs> I think he dove a little too hard. Still be a decent lap. Be in the high high mid-ish 55s. <laughs> That's with losing about three tenths in the blue flag process there. Did it again, because I'm a stupid t oh. oh, okay, so the tires are there. Yep, yeah, you can see how bad the tires are. Look how the car is moving. Jesus Christ. I hate this tire model. I hate it with a bloody, bloody passion. Oh my God, it is so bad. <laughs> Still hasn't returned to normal. Come on, boys. There. Tires are back to normal. How the, how's the wear? We're still in the 80s. Yellow flag. Mengual off again. Pit lane open shortly. Sergio is going to be... Byron's trying to get me to watch UFC. We're racing, Byron. We're racing. For more Tales of Byron, please look at the uh, ESR YouTube channel where he is my commentary partner and heterosexual life mate. We like more or less all the same things to an absolutely scary level.
I mean, we disagree on things, actually. Like, eh. Like, there are various wrestlers and fighters we have very, very different opinions on, for example. But we both like pro wrestling, we both like video games. Both like a lot of the same video games. <laughs> I've often described him as my West Coast brother. My big brother. And it was a absolute privilege, and not to mention delicious, because he cooks really well, uh, to go out and meet him um, out in BC uh, last year. Went for uh, another fr another gaming friend's wedding, and met up with him, and also Martin, who at some point we'll see come through on a blue flag again. <laughs> and a big thanks to all three of those individuals for showing me a really good time, and uh, give me a place to stay for the week I was there. Although, Sean less so, because I helped him set up for his wedding. So, like, he got pay he got kind of payment. And, like, free labor. <laughs> and also great marriage advice. James Butler's done something again. Yep, there he is. <laughs> he keeps saying fucking car, but he refuses to change out of the Porsche. He said it on Discord there, so Discord's not being caught. You missed him. <laughs> you missed him twice going fucking car. <laughs> Got a little bit late on the brakes there. Kind of made me worry a little bit. Clean run through Tamborello. Nonetheless, into Villeneuve. Large pit window, so no real rush. Got a fairly stable. Um, idea of fuel. So really we're just looking for the tires to drop off um, and when they drop off. Because wanna ha like because you can see my, my like I'm, I'm still like right now even up on my overall best lap time so there'd be no point in pitting now. Outside of I'm, I guess you could argue traffic but like I don't consider Sergio to be like traffic. Like this is a guy I wouldn't. I'm not going for an undercut with an hour and 18 minutes left, <laughs> and 79% on, or 78% on my lowest tire. <laughs> um, so pit stop is still a number of laps away. Ah, oh, come on. That wasn't really off the track. I, I protest that. Good lap, though. This would be, what, a 50 foot, 55 four. Max Simmons in the pit lane. That, I'm going to guarantee you, is not a planned pit stop, because Max Simmons always likes to go super late into races, despite my... <sighs> it's not that it's a bad idea. I, I, think, I think, to a degree... It comes off sometimes like I'm saying he he shouldn't go late into his pit into the pit stop window. The truth is is that a driver who can unlock the fresh rubber can go late into a pit stop window and turn that into something great, or who can make the tires last a long time. Looking at Max Simmons's uh, lap times, just on a cursory glance, it doesn't seem like either of those things are true. Which means that he's losing time on the old tires and then not necessarily getting it back when he has the rubber advantage. Because he's, you know, he's often going up against Martin Edmonds, who we here at the Mio Nerd channel make fun of constantly. I'm going to finish this up after maybe making this overtake happen. Ah, can't get quite enough over. 
overlap. If I had taken him out there, that would have been 100% my fault. So back out of it. Um, shame, though. I had a really good lap time going there. He's definitely struggling with something. Catching is one thing, and passing is, unfortunately, a completely other thing. I'll have another shot, maybe at Tamborello. Once we get a moment of free... Oh, I broke way too early. Ah... I mean, I'm still on his tail, so it's not a big deal. But I ch I chickened out. I chickened out. I was saying I would have a go into Tamborello. And then I got... S I, I, I don't know. I got nervous. Got nervous. Didn't want to do be a torpedo. How am I doing in relation to Scott Nick? It's 9.3 seconds. I'm gonna have to check. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that gap because that's the question. If I'm like, I'm obviously losing some time behind Sergio as Mauricio. No, Delgado. Ugh. Managed to not overtake under yellows. That's good. Although, in that case, I think I would have been justified under, like, grounds of safety, but... <laughs> also, oh, also, as far as pit stop is concerned, I'm kind of waiting until I get suspension damage, because it's Emila, the suspension damage is gonna come, and I might as well, you know, fix it. Like, it's, it's not something I'd, like, fix, I'd pit specifically to repair, because these cars are fairly robust. But I might as well have one get out of jail free card. Right, it's a lost ground that lap, obviously, but it was not. It was not because of Sergio. It was because of uh, blue flag Mar Mauricio. you on the tail. Anyways, to finish up, because this seems to have settled itself, at least for now, um, to finish up on this, on the, on the late pit stopping thing, and the fact that I think some people are not using it properly, is like I said, if you're, if you're able to either make the tires last long, so that when you're on worn tires, it's less of a th thing than it is for other people. Oh, I don't know about that. That's a little cheeky. And Andrew D gives him a lit, ever so slightly of a shove. That I think could have been construed as defending under blue flags. And that would be a little bit cheeky as a result. Kind of wondering if like so my, my thought here is that we saw Mengual twice pointed the wrong way. I think he's got damage. Because he was very quick in qualifying in the practice session. Um, he's not going ridiculously slow, but he would almost be better off... Well, no, actually, you know what? He's probably just driving his rearview mirrors trying to keep me behind him. Problem is, is that by doing so... He's kind of taking us out of the fight for third place. Which, I mean, I don't know about him, but my goal would have been third in this race. Unless he knows something about our championship battle that I admittedly just don't. I'm up the inside. Probably not enough, though. And I ended up having to take the spiky curb. And we're, lo we're, gonna lo we're losing time to Scott Nick. Mm. 
Like, I'm happy to follow you, Sergio. Just go. Get moving. It's, it's just that you're slow that this keeps becoming an issue. <laughs> I'm happy to follow you, him up to, like, the... The fight that I want to be in it, uh, in on. We'll put it that way. Go a little break here. Leave Martin's room. I think John Spriggs actually is Mole, from something that was said by uh, by Martin on the Discord, which you may or may not have heard. I, I've, I've figured out. Uh, I'm using the new. I'm using the old uh, wireless headset that I used to use. Uh, because the cable for the HyperX uh, headset that I was using doesn't really reach the computer. Well, it does. Um, but it's like getting in the way and shit. And I do prefer the, the, the wireless. The problem was is that the way I had things set up before, the wireless would like cut out every like couple laps and lose sound. It was, you know, less than ideal. Hasn't done that since I've started using it again, so... If that's uh, if that's not the problem, then we're back to, we're back in business with the uh, the Steel Series headset. Came very close to the back of Sergio there. Didn't break late. I think he's just I think he was just a little slow letting the blue flag resolve. Uh, I'd really prefer if you didn't go there. If you'd waited for after Villeneuve. And I'm off. And I'm off. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you thought that was a totally legit uh, blue flag timing. I just... I kind of think it wasn't. I think he could have waited for after Villeneuve. And eliminated any perhaps any potential danger, honestly. Like I'm looking at, I'm looking at it from his safety too. Like there was a, there's a solid chance that I would not have really been able to hold that. Try not to dive bomb on blue flags, please. Not you, Wayne. The last one. <laughs> No, no, your, yours, was, yours was fine. Luci, Luciano's was a bit... Uh, has me a little teeved. It's just, you know, kind of a general or, or request. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he did kind of the opposite. He, like, went hard into Villeneuve to get past me. And it was like, this could have ended really badly. <laughs> Oh Jesus! Completely, completely fucked the breaking up there. And across there we go. Tires are starting to yellow up, right front. Uh, problem is, is we're not even close to halfway through. Like from a pit stop standpoint, they don't they don't feel too bad, so it's, it's not a thing. But like if if you were to use the um, the tires are starting to yellow time to get in the pits. You just end up with really yellow tires at the end. So. Yellow flag out for Max... S or blue flag for Max Simmons. I'll leave the inside into Mineral... Oh, okay. You I left it open, but you overcooked that a little bit. <laughs> You weren't, you were, uh, that was not going to be an option, we'll put it that way, to, to not leave it open. I'm having a lot better luck with the, with the longer uh, sessions with, uh, my, uh, new back support. Which looks like a medieval torture device. With spikes. 
the reaction of my roommate when I showed him to, showed it to him was hilarious. He's like, "Why in God's earth did you buy that?" <laughs> I'm like, oh, "It actually really it really helps." I don't know. There's like there's like acupuncture reasons for it. It's like it's like digging into like I guess um, like muscle and nerve centers that tend to need to be, for lack of a better term, a better uh, word, exercised. While you're uh, while you're sitting, and it's doing that for me, I guess. I guess I don't know. I, I I have no I have no idea if the science is sound. All I can say is that um before I had it, I would not have been doing this race. I would have done the 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 sixty minutes of Suzuka Super Series race, and then i um, just been like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go watch the UFC because. My back can't take this, but now, now it can. Like there's, there's still, there's still pain, but it's a, a different kind of, um, it's a different kind of pain, and it's a lot, lot more bearable. So if you two have that problem where you're like your back gets like really sore and you're or you're like you're for me it's the lower back like kind of like tailbone area to like the butt um, area um, I can I can totally tell you what my setup that is uh, largely solved the problem is and uh, you, you can give it a shot and it's not too expensive and no they're not sponsoring me and I don't own the company. <laughs> I will get, I will get no money for it. This is just a, a serious recommendation for something that has worked for me. I am catching Scott Nick and Javier Perez Torres and John Barker. Now, admittedly, that could just mean blue flags have kind of caught them and they've lost some time because it's it's a bit weird to have caught to be catching like all of them. A little late on the brakes into Tamborello, but not too bad. Kept it on. Guys are talking about. I don't know if they're talking about rain or something, because I mean, admittedly, this cra this does look like a rain uh, sky. It's just race room doesn't have any rain, doesn't have any wet tires. So if it rains, we are absolutely screwed. <laughs> Let's see, it's still closing. So I don't know. I mean, I'm bringing the lap time. You can see it's actually it's actually green right now. I've had a couple of runs now in a row there through very anti Alta that have been very quick. It'll be a while, but yet though, before I get into anything, oh, this is good. this is going to be within a second of my qualifying lap, I think. Uh, maybe not. Got off of Ravatsa a little bit bad. So this is going to be like a 54 flat. Or a 55 flat. Pardon me. I was thinking I was running. 54 is there for a half second. Oh, Javier is in trouble. Maybe something with Barker? There he is. No, Javier! Javi's my ACC teammate, and he's been a really good teammate. Was silver winner at Barcelona for our team. He, whoa! It's also my, also probably my biggest rival for that silver cup. So <laughs> that's going to be interesting. We'll, we'll we'll see how we'll see if the relationship between the two of us deteriorates when it when it comes down to uh um <laughs> uh brass tax for the silver cup. 
but right now we're one round into the season and uh, everything's great. We're in first place team wise. He's winning the silver cup. Uh, Paul is a kind of a tier two championship contender for the overall cup. You know, didn't take a podium in race one, but definitely was in the mix. Definitely is a guy who's going to be hanging around the you know top five or at least top ten all season. He's our platinum guide dog. Came up with a really good. So Javier was catching up with me for is catching is is his engine can't be that gone. So hopefully he can soldier on. And get himself to the pit box. Looks like maybe him and somebody went side by side through uh, Tamborello. Based on what he was saying, I would think he's going to pit now, though. Still catching Barker. I have lost a little bit of ground to Bengal, though. I don't know, that's coming back. Um, and gaining on Scott Nick. Within 10 seconds of Scott Nick now, actually. So, things are looking good. For maybe a podium. I hope that's hot. I hope Javier's in the pits. That's, that gap is growing. probably think that without some good luck going my way, I probably am not in for a podium. Um, just don't think that, like, on pace I'm going to catch Barker. But I am hoping to get Mengual and Nick. Plenty of time left. It's almost an hour left. Jesus Christ. Tons of time. God, I need a shower. <laughs> Even I find myself offensively uh, uh, offensive right now. <laughs> That's a sign. Still putting up good laps, so despite the yellowed front tires, which are down to 63 and 61%, still going well. So, I think Javier is still in the pits, unfortunately. His race might be done. Flag out. That's the race leader, Josiah. Jerome. It's a little bit rude. That was the body language of, uh, I'm coming and it don't matter what you think. Which is weird, because he's up like 16 plus seconds. Like, when you have that kind of lead, like, I don't know. I just feel like you can be pretty, you can be pretty considerate. Scott Nix apologizing for something. And we're really catching up. I'm really catching up to him, and so is Sergio. Me and Sergio seem to be more or less static, though. Like, we'll go we'll go from, like, basically four and a half second gap to five and a half second gap, just depending on who's a little bit more on it. So his problem earlier, I think, was really just that he was driving with his uh, looking out the rearview mirror a lot when I was on his tail. It was slowing him down.
so he doesn't doesn't respond super well to pressure, basically. Oh, big lag spike. Went okay, though. So what's the halfway point going to be here? So we've gone 50 minutes. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess it'd be like it fits two and a half minutes. I don't know why. I don't know why I was thinking that would be hard to figure out. <laughs> so we're in my pit stop window now. I'd like to get a couple more laps, and as long as I can do these, like. You know, like within a half second uh, of fastest lap, then you know there's not really, honestly, even even more than that. Like, is that that was a bad run through Alta there? And Andrew has picked that side. We can easily accommodate that. Wow, that Ravaza on my best lap was not very good. But do you remember actually that being very bad? So another solid lap. 55-1. Like as long as I'm putting up 55s, like I am I I have I have no proof that I can go anything. <laughs> Still with fresh tires, so. This is about the closest I've been to Mengual in a while, and the closest I've been to Scott Nick in a while. There they both are. Both have to let Andrew D through in the next couple of corners. Which will hopefully... Again, you kind of possibly argue that that's defending from what I saw back here. That was a squeeze under blue flags. That's a little rude. Be up to Andrew D if he wants to report it though. There was somebody else that Mengual squeezed though, so. If not a penalty, it's becoming a little bit of um Oh, they're they're at it now. And Mengual's got Scott. And John Barker ate his pit stop, so he's back further now. So he's going for the undercut or well not really because he's not battling anyone like his his undercut was Javier basically and Javi unfortunately has is still running because he's only a lap down but it looked like he had some major work in the pits to do plenty of time left in the pit window this is a not as good lap Silly, fairly decent one. Fifty-five four. I mean, the question will be if I catch up to them, to Scott, and can't get past him, what do I do? There is the pit stop menu. Gonna adjust that fuel number. But not with Mark Ebbins coming up to blue flag. And certainly not in the Aqua Minerali section. A little bit deep.
60 liters should get me to the end. With a little bit to spare. That's Martin in the pits. So, gap has grown a little bit. As that was not a good lap. 47 flat. As long as I can still put down 55s and I'm not on the back of them losing time, I will not pit. We're going to go for the hard charge at the end. Not sure if it'll work out. But I don't think the chances of it working out are any less than what we got right now. Because the tires are holding up remarkably well. The backs are still not even yellow. You can see the lap times. Yeah, yeah that last lap of, 50, of 57 flat was not good. There was some mistakes. But like This one's going to be like a 55-5, uh, which is not good, but not terrible. Oh, okay, maybe with that Alta, it won't be. But it's not the tires. Like, the tires don't feel bad. I may draw the line at 45 minutes left. Go an hour, then go then go 45 minutes to the end on the second set. That might be the plan. Also kind of waiting for those backs to yellow a little bit. Interesting, they're still calling for 31 minutes of race time. That's a bit weird. 31 uh, laps, I should say. Oh no, pardon me, I estimated left 25. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I'm just crazy. Kind of screwed up the first part of Aqua Minerali there. Otherwise, a good lap. I can't remember if James Butler pitted or not. Is he on? Okay, he is on there. Okay. He is not. So we're not worried about him. It's Barker that is the uh, the pit stop, the undercut. No, we lost John Spriggs. Moly moly! Right, I'm going to go one more lap. And then it's into the pits. Forty three second pit stop predicted plus the run down the pits. Uh, I've actually put more ground between me and Bar Barker. That's interesting. Scott, Nick, and Delgado spun it. And into fourth place I go, although probably coming out behind John Barker. So probably a, a practical fifth.
Ugh. I need to resist the urge to shift down at Aqua Minerali. Let Josiah through. Last couple of runs through of Alta have been pretty poor. That'll be something to try and fix up. Sergio's managed to open up a six second gap to me. So he's on his horse. It's weird. Barker, who should be theoretically the one on the charge, although he has taken a little bit out of me the last two laps, really hasn't. Okay, into the pits we go. Pits are empty. So let's get this done. Refueling. Go, 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 go. About a lap of comfort margin, like that. New tires. Butler is past me, Scott and Nick is past me, but both need to pit. Barker is the intriguing one. It's race leader Liam Curtin in. Or class leader, I should say. Race leader is... It's always so weird with this car that it goes in a second gear for the hit limiter. He's got time. I did come out behind Barker. I'm now also lapped by class leader Zifo Duran, who is not pitted. Let's see if I can stay with him for a bit. Didn't actually get any close to Barker, so Butler will easily behind me. Dixon, Nick will be behind me as well when they come into pit. So, really the question right now is make up ground on John Barker on track. Utilize the fresh tires to put more pressure on the overcutting um, Sergio Mengual. And see what happens. Wow, it's more than a minute of lost time in the pits, apparently, because it was, what, six seconds behind Mengua? He's now uh, a minute 13 ahead, so it seems like about 67 seconds. As I mess up Rivaza a little bit. Enter myself another somewhat pointless cut track. So lost ground to Barker on the lap. Tires are so cold is probably the why. You can already, already see the pace differential. through uh, Tamborello with the newer tires. Uh, 
Javier describing his woes. Apparently half an engine and uh, a busted transmission. Cannot be fun. I've closed a couple of tents to Barker this lap. Wish I could see where where I am in relation to... Well, I, I can, actually. Oh, no! Figures I do the freaking pit stop and then damage the suspension. God damn it. Alright, let's see how she handles. Oh, I can already feel it into Ravaza particularly. Oh, boy. Okay. This is not going to be good. I'm not sure if it's... It's not... It's not pit stop bad. But, oh, boy. I can feel the car not liking it. We're not going to tell anyone in the race about our problems. Sergio Mengual did get into the pits, pits and out ahead of us. So him and him and Barker are the competition. I don't, I don't think that the suspension damage is necessarily going to air quotes make me sl uh, well I say that and then it goes really wide Scott Nick still yet to pit Zifo Duran yet to pit blue flag that's Josiah coming through Man, it really wants to pull. To, it really wants to pull to the left. This is a problem. Again, it's not necessarily that the car is slow. It's that it isn't cooperating. And this may have ended the podium bid. We can see why. Plus one second on this lap right now. Oh boy. Don't worry about it. So, suddenly this has become more of a battle with Scott, Nick, and... Um, and James Butler for fifth place. Because I don't think I can do anything about Mengual or Barker. With the damaged car. It's damage limited. I mean, I could pit now. I mean, I'd lose like a, I'd lose like a minute in the pits, though, wouldn't I? Like we figured it out, it was over a minute. And even if I'm losing a let's say a second a lap, it's only nineteen there's only nineteen uh well twenty laps to go. That's gonna be, you know, twenty ish seconds lost. So the pit stop would be plus an extra forty on that. I think I even said it. I kind of wanted to damage the suspension before the pit stop. Get the get the get out of jail free card. Didn't do it. And now here I am. Damage suspension going for the end of the race. And like not remotely able to take on Varianti Alta. Kind of in the Javier Perez Torres boat, though not as bad as him. He, he had a really long pit stop and couldn't really even fix what was wrong with the car. So, so he he he, he wins the shit award on this one. I just have to not lose thirty six seconds to James Butler, basically. Let's see what we can do.
is unfortunately Mauricio Delgado's lapped car ahead of me. Oh, Sergio's off again. Well, I didn't really count on that. Although, perhaps I should have, because he's had a couple of journeys through the, uh, through the Boneyard. Welcome to the Boneyard match! Oh, yeah! Those who watch Talk and Shop of Mania will understand that whole thing. Everyone else is completely confused and thinks I've lost my mind. And if we're being honest, kind of have. <laughs> I think everyone's. A, I think everyone who does what I do is a little crazy. <laughs> Roommates get to have this, hear this lovely one-sided conversation constantly when I'm talking with people on Discord or even uh, even recording like I am right now. You know the fact that I'm keeping relatively up with John Barker with the broken suspension, it makes it worse. Because you're like, damn, like that podium was really on offer. It was really, really on offer when Javier had his accident. And I just am not going to be able to seize the opportunity. Sergio Mengual has pulled the pin. And I think Butler's had some problems because he's now over 40 seconds behind me. So, fourth place is definitely on offer. If I don't break the car. More. <laughs> Actually, decent run through Alta despite the damage to the suspension, meaning I'm really not willing to throw the car in there. Revaza. It's, um. It's, to be honest, it's more the left hand turns that are really problematic. Oh, no more Richard Hicks. So it's, it's really more the lefties that are problematic with this. So, like, and not even all of them. Like, Tamborello has been pretty okay. Villeneuve is not terrible with the suspension damage. Toast is okay too, actually. So I'll point out the corners that are like really worrying me. So Piratella worried me just in general. Um, it's awkward now in this as well. But it's this first one here in Aqua Minerali that I think is probably the worst and the second from aqua minerali is also not great and then alta i'm worried about not necessarily because how the car handles it because it's not like 
you can see that it's not been too bad any time through there. It's just that that's where the suspension's probably going to break. And then Ravatsas. I take that back, actually. Aqua Minerali is not the worst Ravatsas. Anyways, we'll let Andrew D through here. I'm just kind of watching the gap to Butler. Like, I'm watching the gap to Barker. If he makes mistakes, we can get back in this podium fight. The problem is... He doesn't really make mistakes. He's like a super consistent driver who is... Periodically fast and periodically not fast. Um... Division 2 King when we were doing division titles instead of class titles. Um, division 2 being like the you, you know what you're doing <laughs> but you're not really fast. <laughs> or you don't know or you're fast and you really have no idea what you're doing. So like um I hate to, I I hate to throw shade because everyone everyone learns at their own rate. But uh, Fubihiro Kobayashi would be like an example of that, where like a guy who really quick, like very quick, but not necessarily able to keep it on track, race side by side in any real safe. So like you know, the kind of guy who's going to qualify like you know top ten and then finish like twentieth sort of thing. Like that's that's the the other side of Div 2. <laughs> so Butler and Nick are getting closer. Not at a rate that has me super concerned that they'll take me on pace. The concern, of course, is that I have a car that isn't necessarily doing what I want it to do. And there are several turns that I'm going to have to take in a very conservative fashion as to not break the car. Tamborello, for example. You gotta stay up those curbs. Like the, the, or not the curbs, the bumps. Like, those curbs I can use, this curb I need to stay, or the bumps again. I can use the little Italian flag bits of the curb. So, for example, that, or that, and the AstroTurf. But any of the yellow bumps I cannot use on the right side of the car. Yellow flag, Wayne or blue flag for Wayne Hutchinson. And Wayne's up to fourth. Interesting. I have taken a shifting down. Oh, no, no, no. That was a bad idea. That's a corner right there. And of course, Alta, which is the suspension breaker. Took it a little bit there. Kept expecting to see my my uh, bar just go right down. But there's like there's 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 no strategic option. If I pit, I'm gonna come out behind Scott Nick and James Butler, and I'm not gonna have the time to catch them because. We'd be talking about, what, 37 seconds to Butler? Like, I have a bigger gap now, but... Luciano Echazo. I'm giving you the line. 
do not make me do side by side things. <laughs> Butler is not consistently closing on me, so there is that at least. Scott Nick is, but Nick's got to get past Butler. Stay off the curb, stay off the stay off this curb particularly. Like take it wide. There we go. That's the line now. It's not the fast line, but that's the line that we're that I'm using through Ackerman Rally now. Need like some rickety music right now. I realize the delt on this lap is terrible. I don't care. I didn't damage the suspension. That, that is the goal for like every lap from now on. Don't damage suspension and you've done your job. left side can still kind of take the normal line. So like that or the first part of Tamborello, first part of Villeneuve, the car is still functional as normal through there. It's that second part of Villeneuve there that I got to be really ginger with. And then basically the entirety of Aqua Minerale and Alta. And then there were just some other places like Ravatsa and, and uh, that one there that I just don't feel comfortable going through. I don't feel like I'll break the car, it's just the car is not stable. <laughs> Curtain fastest lap 52 8. Uh, again, Liam Curtain and uh, Zifo Duran have been absolutely in a world of their own. Although Zifo has actually fallen back a little bit since the. I think I think he stayed out too long. <laughs> he was one of the last GT4s to pit, and I think he lost a lot of time. Scott Nick is still closing on me. Butler's closing on me a little bit, but it's less than a second in the last couple of laps. Um, so the threat from behind seems to be more Scott Nick if he can get past Butler than Butler himself. He'd have to make up over three seconds a lap to get me, and I just don't think he has it. I don't think Scott does either, but there's a chance Scott is being held up, so we'll see.
This is where I like kind of wish a uh, kind of wish that we had the ACC um, data system because it allows you to see not well, mind you, but like it would allow me to like to like kind of vaguely figure out what lap times Butler is doing. I mean, I kind of know he's doing like. Let's see here, we're, we're going to come across the line with like a 56.2. So he's doing like mid 55s. Curtain is blitzing the time charts. And you think he's not even really pushing right now because he's so far ahead. the problem of course you know, you're gonna run into somebody who just this is the sim racing problem that doesn't come up so much in sports car racing I mean, it'll come up in f1 obviously lewis hamilton hello but someone who just someone or a very small group of people who just aren't with the rest of us Mind you, I'm happy that Zepho and Curtin are in their own world because then, then this suspension will be costing me a win. <laughs> Fighting for a win versus a podium. That would suck. Because it removed them from the equation. Barker's in the lead right now. Maybe Mengual stuck around and he's in second place. But I'd be in third place thinking maybe I can win. happened and I missed it. Butler is way back there now. Butler? Oh, Butler retired. Shit. That's disappointing. Particularly as that probably means I have more ballast for the next race. Scott Nick is proclaiming his innocence. I am uh, not 100% sure I believe him. Focusing really hard right now. I'm bringing it home. And then giving John Barker a smart aleck remark at the end. Nine laps to go. Maybe less, because it might drop to eight if Liam laps me. And he probably probably will, although uh, the gap between us has actually grown a little bit. Oh, suck it up. I've had no suspension for half the race. You know, you're about the only person whose car I wouldn't trade with, Javi. <laughs> I 
Every time I go into Varianti Alta, I'm like, please, God, let the car hold together. Hey, it's a sixth place on offer. It's like the. This has become, with Butler retiring and Mengual retiring, like, not nearly as like interesting or fun as a, of a race. <laughs> like we're we're at the stage where I'm racing. I'm I'm racing against my suspension falling apart. This is this is what I'm racing. <laughs> After promising so, so much. Stayed in third gear a while there because I was grabbing my water tube. Oh, it's kind of gone warm on me. Ah, there we go. Through Tamborella once again. Just seven more times, hopefully. And Martin Edmonds, and somehow he's gotten ahead of Andrew D. Lead them the inside line into uh, leading up to. Uh, I've forgotten the name of this turn. Piratella. There we go. Scott Nick is, is catching, but not at any great rate. And he would need to start taking about five seconds a lap out of me. And then get me to make a mistake. Oh, that didn't work out for D. That worked out really well for Martin because Javier wound up between the two for a little bit. leader coming through. Oh, no it is not. It's Max Simmons. I keep expecting to see Liam Curtin up on me. And it keeps not being him. Former race room member Two Chains playing some Street Unlimited game. Thirty seven seconds back to Scott Nick still.
Oh, seven laps to go. And again, baby six. If Liam catches me and laps me, I'm not really sure how it works out the uh, the number of laps because like seven laps seems like too much for what is almost a two minute lap and uh, under ten minutes remaining. Feels like six at best, but uh, could be based off of what Liam's gonna do, and he just hasn't lapped me yet. There he is in my rear view, the Lotus. You can check out his onboards on his YouTube channel. He does the same thing I do, only more competently in the car, but with less talking. <laughs> Some would say that's a pattern. Careful right here. Blue flag's been out for a bit, but like Liam hasn't really gotten close to me. So somebody out there is gonna be like, "You've you've had a blue flag for like three turns, and you're not wrong." I just don't think he's really all that close. Inside to Wayne and Luciano, and we might as well let Liam through as well. Thirty three seconds back to Scott Nick. But equal distance between him and John Barker now. I heard an uh-oh from Martin Edmonds, so something something cool might happen. <laughs> Simmons is like lapped by the other GT3s. That's interesting. All right, front has gone yellow. Well, it didn't change the lap estimate with the with the estimate of, uh, or with the lapping, so. I don't think that's that number's gonna be right. Like, there, I don't think there's any way I get five more laps in these last six minutes, but okay. I mean, there, it'll be more than six minutes, of course. But, I don't know, I'm thinking four. We'll see. We'll see if I'm right or if the uh, overlay's right. Apparently I'm in the top 10 overall. There's that few GT3s left.
too many people quit. Too many. Uh, Scott Nick, watch. He's actually losing ground to me, so he's made a mistake. Or had some fun under blue flags with. Well, no, can't even. No one, no one's even really all that close to him. Ah, uh, well, he did lap Mauricio Delgado. That could have done it. Race leader Josiah Hiram coming around again. Zips on through. The underappreciated Audi R8 that he is driving. Not the most up to date run, that would be the Evo. This is the one before the Evo. It is the most up-to-date one in this game now. I want to say it's like the second most up-to-date uh, ACC GT3 car. I think the most is um, the Porsche, I'm pretty sure. And then I think it's it. Um... I mean, the, the Mercedes and the C7 are kind of in the same general time frame, but I think the Audi is the newest of the three. <laughs> and then the M6 isn't too far off. Or maybe the M6 is, is actually in that mix a little bit more than I'm thinking. It came to the, it came to race room the, uh, the earliest of the bunch. But it may not, in fact, be. Um, I think I think it's I think it's I think it was like brand new when it came to race room. The other ones, the other ones took a bit. C7 updated R8 updated AMG. All kind of in that same. Also. The 650S McLaren should actually be in that grouping as well, but this game uh, treats it like it's much older. And uh, it's um, it's not very competitive. Looks like I was right, by the way. We're not going to get to 56 laps, I don't think. Uh, don't worry about it. You just focus on getting the car around the track. I ain't racing anybody. Javier wants to let me pass, which... I mean, at some point he'll have to, you know... He, sh like, should do, but, like... Should be just a standard blue flag procedure. Nothing. Nothing more. I don't care to get past him. I don't really want to go side by side with anybody. With my suspension being as it is. I'm actually doing a really quick lap, so he's, he's doing okay for his car being as beat up as it is. So my driver of the day is Javier Perez Torres. I know Liam Curtin and Josiah Jerome are going to get the wins and whatever, but uh, props to Javi for charging through the problems, and I believe he's actually still ahead of the running car of uh, Mauricio Delgado. Who may have all kinds of damage, and I just don't know it, but, you know, still. Should be the final lap.
I mean, it'd be nice if this is the last lap. Like, unless Barker's car spontaneously combusts. I don't want that. J James is a nice guy. I would accept Liam Curtin's car spontaneously combusting, because he's kind of been sandbagging lately. And I'm, a little, I'm a little disappointed by it. He's in Tier 3 in the Super Series, and I'm in Tier 2. And that makes... I mean, if you've been watching this race, you know that that makes no sense. <laughs> Go. Curtin, Duran, Baca. We did it, fam! We did it! Fourth place. I mean, granted, I think only like seven GT4s finish <laughs> the race. So, and there were only ten to begin with. So, fourth place, really not as cool as you'd think it is. Uh, we lost Alex Loeffler, uh, Sergio Mengual, and James Butler. But, um, I'll take it. It's a night... It doesn't matter the circumstances. It's still fourth place in Hall of Points. And um, the fact that I managed to get to the end with the damaged car and not kill it. Um, and really actually have no significant moments on track. Um, I'm quite proud of that. I'm not necessarily proud of like the fourth place. But I I'm proud of the, the... I'm proud of the composure in the race, I guess is the word. So I'm not necessarily proud of the driving in its entirety... Because, like, the first half of the race, the f before the pit stop, I wasn't wasn't really ca ca uh, capitalizing on what I had. Like, I was right up on Scott Nick multiple times, right up on Sergio Mangual multiple times, didn't make any moves, didn't shove it, didn't show the aggression. Um, but I managed to... Uh, but I managed to keep it in the race, get to the pit stops, be looking at a podium, damage the car, but at the same time... Uh, managed to stay composed and bring it to the end so see you next time suzuka set of course uh, gt challenge series tomorrow get ready for it